about to travel, she said, I want to postpone this flight. I don't like the fact that we're arriving on December 4th or 5th, right after the election. I said, November, November, sorry, November, arriving back. We, we, we flew out the day after the election, and we were coming in like on the Thursday. She said, I don't know what will happen. You know, we want to, I said, look, nothing will happen, praise God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So another testimony was, you know, everything went smoothly on our return, and God is good. Amen. I want to just stand up on our feet. We're going to take a, a few. We're going to read some scriptures. We have Pastor Crump and Lady Crump with us, and we're going to just take a few scriptures, set the, set the agenda for today. The Lord gave me a word that I would like to share with us before he comes and um, I'm trusting God that it will help set the pattern for what God wants us to do. I'm going to read from Second Peter chapter 2. Uh, the word of the Lord to me was, beware of false liberty. Beware of false liberty. Second Peter chapter 2. I'm going to read verse 2 and 3. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 2 and 3. So let's start from, oh, I'll start from verse 1. It says that, but there were also false prophets. Second Peter chapter 2 from verse 1 to 3. There were also false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon them swift destruction and many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of and through covetousness shall they be with feigned words make merchandise of those of, of you whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not Father, your word is anointed as we speak it. Let it go forth. Let it heal. Let it save. Let it deliver. Let it make whole in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We can have our seats. Just a few minutes. I want to share with us on beware of false liberty. Um, I'm going to be talking about three things that God spoke to me while I was in Nigeria. We've got to be careful in the generation we live in to beware of false liberty. Because in 2020, God told me that, Pastor Crumb, that 2020 was a year of liberty, amen. One of the secrets of discovering truth is to identify falsehood. You see, Lady Crumb may, you know, she knows a $100 bill, but she may never have seen a fake $100 bill. It's easier for me to deceive Lady Crumb than to deceive somebody who works at the Federal Reserve. Because in the Federal Reserves, if you, if you go there, they have fake $100 bills. They, 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 they prototype what the fake looks like so that no matter what, they, can, they know what the real looks like. What I'm trying to say is that it's easier to deceive somebody who has never identified the false. Amen. Your ability to know the truth is heightened when you know what the false is. It's, it's, just, it's just common sense. Um, the Bible says that in the book of Isaiah that Jesus knew to do good, that Jesus ate honey, and because he ate honey, he, it also provoked him to do good. So basically, when you do the right thing, when you know the right thing, when you know what is not right, the chances of you doing the right thing are higher. What I'm trying to say is this. Many times we talk about liberty, but we hardly talk about false liberty. So what's a False liberty. And this was the first time I had come across this in the scriptures. And, you know, the, the Bible says that in verse, two, verse 1 of 2 Peter 2, verse 1, that there were false prophets. There were false teachers. And that God says I was going to judge them with swift destruction. But what really caught my attention was in verse 18 where the Bible talks about these people. So catch this now, Sister Dr. Ngudike. These people were false teachers. They were false prophets. 
they were they had pernicious ways. That means that they had uh, the word pernicious means anemic. Um, they, they were, there were people who, who spoke the wrong thing. Their words were not, were not blessing people. But in verse 18, look at what the Bible said. It says that, but for when they speak, talking about the false prophets, when they speak, they speak great swelling words of vanity. They allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. Now, verse 19 is where I'm going. While they promise them liberty. Someone said that to me. While they promise them liberty. While they promise them liberty. They themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. Second Peter 2.19. It's amazing to me, Pastor Crumb, that the same people who are promising Liberty are false teachers and false prophets. That means what they were promising people was false liberty. Am I correct? And God said, I want you to tell my people that in 2020, in this year of liberty, that one of the things I really want them to note is false liberty. Because if you can identify the false, it will help you to walk in the truth more. Am I talking to somebody? That was what the Lord told me, and it was pretty clear. I'll give an example, and I'm, not, I'm saying this on TV, and I'm saying this on live stream, because I, I want people to understand where I'm coming from. And I'm not saying this because I'm a political person or anything. I'm just saying this because the Spirit of God speaks through me. In the month of March, the Lord spoke to me, and the Lord spoke to me clearly. And he said, beware of... Biden, not because Biden was a bad person, but because we had an agenda that we, 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 that the Lord was telling me that could become against the church. And this is what the Lord was trying to tell me here. There are people who have put their hope in Biden. There are people who have put their hope in the Democratic Party. There are people who have put their hope in the Republican Party. And God is saying, no man can give you true liberty. I know America is built on liberty. I know America is built on pursuit of happiness and justice for all. Free. That's great. But the true liberty is a spiritual liberty. Wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 2 Corinthians 3, 18. I'm here to tell somebody, Trump can't give you true liberty. Biden can't give you true liberty. Reeves can't give you true liberty. Democratic Party can't give you true liberty. The Republican Party, the Independent, the Libertarian. The only liberty that is true, real, sustainable, and everlasting is the divine liberty. Is somebody getting what I'm talking about? So when I say beware, people are looking at me like, well, I'm free. What are you talking about? Many of us have put our hope for liberty in someone or something. And it's easy in the last days to be deceived. The book of, I believe, um, Amos chapter 8 verse 11. The Bible says in the last days there will be a famine of the word of God. It will not be a famine of Mangoes and oranges and apples and pineapples and papayas. He says there will be a famine of the word of God. So what you're having today is, is secular humanism on the pulpit. Feel good preaching. People who just want to. And, and Bible says they shall raise up teachers who will give them what they want to hear. Itching ears and all that. I, I'm trying to warn the church. We, we've got to be careful about false liberty from people who preach falsehood. Is somebody getting what I'm talking about? It's amazing to me that these people promised liberty. They promised liberty, but the Bible says that they themselves were bound, like this witch doctor who came to promise us rain. He can't even stop rain from falling on his own funeral. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody? That tells me he's a false preacher because... He himself cannot stop rain from falling on his own funeral. And he's trying to tell me to pay him to, to stop rain from falling on. That's a, that's a, that's a, and the problem, and I know this sounds crazy, is that 90% of people believe those people 
and give them money and they become partakers of their sins. The reason why God is saying this is because every time you partake of false liberty, you go in the wrong direction. You enter into captivity. The Bible says here that they who are promising you liberty, if you look at it in verse 19, that they themselves are servants of corruption. Am I talking to somebody? Do you realize that when you enter into the doctrine or the pattern or the persuasion of somebody who is a servant of corruption, you are going to also end up in corruption. It's, it's a given. Don't tell me, oh, I'm, I'm working for a boss and that boss is stealing and dealing. And, and, and when they rope him in, they'll rope you in too. You are working for a man who is a servant of corruption, according to 2 Corinthians 2.19. What happens to him will end up happening to you. The reason why this message is so urgent is because you cannot be a partaker of the sins of people. So you've got to be careful what you hear. Like a man of God said, choose what you hear. Challenge what you hear. Change what you hear. In this last, this is a famine of the word of God. You've got to be, you've got to be deliberate to look for the truth. Is somebody getting what I'm talking about? Because if you listen to ABC, NBC, Fox, CNN, trust me, they'll promise you liberty, but life, what they're promising you is false liberty. What gives true liberty? What God told me about 2020, the year of liberty. Let me, let me tell you what liberty means. Liberty means you're, you're, you're free to do the will of God without encumbrance. Free to do the will of God without encumbrance. Let me read Romans 6 because I think this scripture encapsulates liberty like no other scripture that I know of. Romans 6 verse 6. Look at what it says in Romans 6 verse 6. Apostle Paul was writing his, theo, his, uh, his, his theory on, on, on freedom and liberty. He said in Romans 6 verse 6. He says, knowing this, Somebody say, knowing this. knowing this. That means if I know this, something's going to happen. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with Jesus, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. That's what liberty is. Sin is not just slipping and dipping and ripping and fornication and adultery. Slip is miss, sin is missing the mark. Am I talking to somebody? That's what the word sin means, missing the mark. The Bible says that he that is dead is not going to miss the mark. It's going to be on target. That is what I call liberty, the liberty to do the will of God. You're not encumbered. You're not, you're not, you, you're not in, uh, in any form of oppression. This is what Jesus said to the people in John chapter 8. He said, the Bible said that, and this Jesus spoke to those that believed on him. He says that if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. Then he went on to say, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. The first thing I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk about DEC. Someone say DEC. -E this is what I want to say, beware of false liberty. DEC is what I'm calling it. The first D is deceptive words. Deceptive words. Beware of deception in the last days. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? Beware of deception in the last days. Jesus said, if you shall continue in my word, he said, I know you are a believer. John 8, 30, 31, 32. The Bible says he spoke to those who were believers. I know your name is in the book of life. I know you go to church. I know you have a, 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 a pedigree, a pattern. A, your, your, you have a history. You have a, 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 a religious heritage. But he says that only those who continue in my word. That means you may have experienced some liberty, but if you don't continue, if you get deceived along the way, am I talking to somebody? Amen. A man of God gave an example one day. He said, you can walk in a soap factory and not have a shower. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. You can walk in a soap factory and not have a bath. Is it the fault of the soap factory? 
You can smell like a stunk or a skunk and work in a soap factory. The soap factory is making soap, but you haven't partaken. You have not accepted. You have not involved yourself. You have not received the word. It's not about the word is there, but if you do not continue in the word, this year of liberty will pass you by. This year of freedom will pass you by. If you choose to be deceived, if you choose to be de de move astray, if you choose not to continue in that word, is somebody getting what I'm talking about? It's, it's a powerful thing that we, we need to understand. If you don't continue, you cannot see the fullness of what God wants to give you. Deception. Someone say deception. deception. I'm going to read what the Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 2, talking about these same people. Don't forget, we talked about them. They are false. Someone say they are false teachers. Somebody said they are false prophets. Then the Bible now says that they promise you liberty, but they themselves are servants of corruption. That's a sermon for another day. But talking about deception, look at how the Bible describes them in verse 12 and to 14 of 2 Peter chapter 2. Like I said earlier, the urgency of this message, Sister Rita, is that I do not want you to partake of another man's corruption by following his deception. Because many people are what I call, they call it uh, sincerely wrong, and they, they end up at the end of, they end up busted and disgusted, and they're like, well, I wish I had known. No, no, no. You don't need to be deceived. The Bible is available. You don't need to be deceived. You should be a Berean Christian who, re, who checks everything out. Don't just believe it because mama them and papa them or the, or the religious authorities and religious hegemony and the, and the societal relevance and the patterns of people and the, the way people have done it for years. No, review it. Look through the eyes of scripture. Is somebody getting what I'm talking about? You're not a, a monologue who just, no, 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 you're a believer. The Bible says that your mind has been purified by the Spirit of God. You should be able to see everything through the Spirit of God. And when I said beware of Biden, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with Biden. I'm just saying we as the church need to understand hope cannot be put in a man. Hope has to be put in God. Because God does not share his glory with any man. If you are looking to man, the Bible says you will not see good when it comes. Jeremiah 17. Iva works with me and, you know, it's easy to become just a man worshiper. You want to just please people. But Jesus made a statement in John chapter 5 verse 44. He said, how can you believe who seek honor from other people? Can you, do you understand? That means that your faith will never rise if your life is tied to pleasing people. How can you believe all you do is seek honor from other people? There's only one person who, it's a, it's a, it's a, like they say, it's, a, it's, a, it's an audience of one. All you've got to do is please God, amen? All you've got to do in life is please God. God will put the people who need to fall in place in place. Is somebody getting what I'm talking about? But let's look at Second uh, Peter, that same chapter, chapter 2, talking about the D, the E, the C, how, why, how we need to beware of false liberty. There are three things these false teachers, false liberty preachers preach. And God says, beware of this. The first one is deception. I'm going to read verse 12 to 14. The Bible says, but you, but these people as natural brute beasts... They are made to be taken and destroyed. They speak evil of things that they understand not. Someone say they understand not. The first thing here is that people, when you follow people who don't understand, you end up in corruption. You end up in destruction. These people are, they, they, they don't even understand what they are saying. They can't explain what they are persuading you to understand. The Bible says that they, they, speak, they, they speak evil of things they don't understand not. And they utterly perish in their own corruption, and they shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. The Bible says, spots they are and blemishes, spotting themselves with their own deceiving. Somebody say deceivings. 
That's what I'm talking about. They, they are sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery and cannot cease from sin. Verse 14, beguiling unstable souls. Beguiling unstable souls. Beguiling means to deceive, deceive. What I'm trying to say here is this, this purveyors of false liberty, their strategy is deception. You know, one of the things about the devil is that he causes, the Bible says in the book of Revelation that, that, uh, that this, that cast him into the pits of hell, the one who has deceived the whole earth. I'm here to tell somebody, if you follow the word, you cannot be deceived, amen? If you follow the word, you cannot be deceived. If, 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 if Jesus is the truth, you cannot be deceived. If Jesus is the way, you cannot get lost. If Jesus is the life, the devil cannot kill you. If Jesus is the truth, you cannot be deceived. If Jesus is the way, you cannot get lost. If Jesus is the life, you, the devil can't kill your destiny. The question is, whose way are you on? If you are on the way of God, you cannot get lost. And this book is the way of the Lord. Is somebody get what I'm talking about? If you read the book of um, 1 Timothy chapter 3 and Matthew chapter 24, the Bible talks about the last days about heretics coming up in the world. If you look at Matthew 24, talking about the last days. Because we're talking about it now, but it's important that we understand that it's coming. Matthew 24, verse 24, the Bible says, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and they shall show great signs and wonders, in so much that if it were possible, Pastor Krim, they shall deceive the very elect. I had a pastor in Texas. He came from America. He came from England, and um, I can tell you his name. His name was uh, 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 Leonard Ranavelli, very famous revivalist preacher. Very famous. In fact, he made statements like that: "You must seize the opportunity of a lifetime in the lifetime of the opportunity." I was shocked when Leonard Ravanelli fell sick. He was a great revivalist. He's dead now. And this man came to Nigeria to the church of a pastor in Nigeria who we all know is a false prophet. How do I know he's a false prophet? He doesn't believe in being born again. He doesn't have a history of being born again. When you go to his church, there's a lot of syncretism. You write stuff on walls. And the name of Jesus is, is mixed with a lot of other names. And, you know, his, 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 I mean, it was so, his church was so, to the point that the church building collapsed and about two, three hundred people died some years ago. That's just an example. But I'm trying to say here, this man of God fell sick. Uh, he came all the way to Nigeria because he wanted to get prayed for. Eventually he died. But the statement he made was that that false prophet was a, was a true prophet of God. And even though he didn't line up with the scripture. Am I talking to somebody? What I'm trying to say is here, in the last days, the Bible says that even the very elect will be deceived if God does not shorten the time. Because these prophets will come with signs and wonders. So one of the greatest things to watch out for in the last days so that you will be aware of false liberty is deception. You've got to say, I refuse to be deceived. I will follow the word of God. I renew my mind. I will keep the word of God as my standard. I will not follow the, the world. I will follow the word. Is somebody getting what I'm talking about? If you look at 1 Timothy chapter 3, just to give you an understanding that we are living in those days. These are not the days for you to take opinions. 2 Second, Timothy chapter 3, these are the days to to, 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 to know the word for yourself. Amen? 2 Timothy chapter 3, the Bible says, there are people who are coming. The Bible says in verse 6, 7, talking about, it says that they have a form of godliness from verse 5. These people have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof from, from so eternal. Which is the people who come in the last days. And in verse 7, it says, Ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. 
That's the, that's the prototype of the believers that will be deceived in the last days. Because the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, in the last days, perishers come, men shall be loved of their own self. Then it says that these are the kind of people who will exist, ever learning. Somebody say ever learning. Ever learning. But never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. It will be sad that too many people go to church, hear sermons, write notes, take recordings, buy CDs, read magazines, but they don't know what they believe because the spirit of deception has entered into their heart. The second thing I want to talk about today is emptiness. When I say emptiness, emptiness. when I say beware of false liberty, God said there are three things I want you to tell my people, and they are all words. They are all words. It says beware of deception, deceptive words, and beware of empty words, empty words. Why do I say empty words? We read it. I'm going to read it again. Verse 18. Look at what the Bible says. Talking about the false preachers who promise liberty. He says that they speak, verse 18 of 2 Peter chapter 2, they speak great swelling words of emptiness. And then they promise people liberty. People who promise false liberty speak empty words. They speak deceptive words. How do you know empty words? Have you read that? Have you heard that saying before by the English? They said empty cans make the most noise. Mm -hmm. Don't go by the container. Go by the content. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that you shall know them by their fruits. Amen. The fruit tree in Mark chapter 11 was looking good. Even Jesus looked and said, wow, this guy has some, some good fruit. But he was empty inside. What happened to him? He was cursed. The Bible says that Jesus cursed the fig tree within 24 hours. The outside was dry, but the minute Jesus spoke the word, the Bible says it began to dry up from the inside. This is what happens to empty trees. They are dead inside. They can't, they, they're not going to show anything outside, but they deceive you. They look okay on the outside. Even Jesus thought that fig tree had something. And I'm counseling you today, beware of empty individuals. Beware of people who speak empty words. How do I know empty words? They're speaking from a hollow life. They have no practice. They have no content. They have no character. Am I talking to somebody? Mm -hmm. So you want to marry somebody and, you know, he, 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 he promises to come and see you at 5 a.m., 5 p.m., and he never shows up. That's an empty word. He says, oh, can you borrow me $1,000? I'll get it back to you next week. You know we're going to get married. It's our money. I just want to buy something, and I'll get back to you. That money never comes back. Empty words. Oh, we're getting engaged. I have a ring. I got it. I just can't find it. Let me get. He never puts the ring on your finger. He keeps delaying, delaying. Empty guy. Empty guy. Run away. He's producing. He's promising you false liberty. He's promising you what he cannot produce. Am I talking to somebody? People who, oh, we'll, we'll get you this, we'll get you that. Check their track record. If their words come to pass, think about following. If their words are empty, there are people like that. Everything they say, in fact, there's a president in Nigeria in the past, they said if he tells you good morning, go outside and check because it might be night. He might be lying. He's, he's a deliberate liar. They call him the evil genius. Those are the kind of people that you should beware of. I think in the book of Proverbs, the Bible says that a, a, false, a false witness that you send on a journey, he's like, he's like a bad tooth. And he's like a cold on a, on a long journey. Am I talking to somebody? That's what happens when you put your trust in people who, are, who give empty words. Look at the characteristics again in verse 18. These people who promise false liberty, one of their greatest characteristics is that they speak great swelling words of emptiness. That means they, they are hyperboles. They, 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 they blow out of proportion things. They, 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 they speak in, 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 in extremist words, words, words of grandiose words. Am I talking to somebody? 
So in these days of deception, of emptiness, in these days to beware of false liberty, if you want to experience true liberty, if you want to know the true liberty that John 8.32 says, that you shall, you shall be free and free indeed, God told me to tell you, Please beware of empty words. Beware of empty people. Beware of deceptive words. If you don't know the false, you can't really know the true. Many of you have entered into bondage or corruption because you've been swayed by smooth talkers. Swayed by people who promise you heaven and earth. You know, just give me this money. It will come back for 100 times. How are you going to do it? No questions asked. You don't ask that. How are you going to do it? What kind of work are you going to do? What kind of investment is this? No, 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 no. Just how much do you want? Take it. Take it. Take it. You don't see the person again. In Nigeria, there was a, there was a, 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 a they call it a Ponzi scheme. And it, it, it was all over Africa. Apparently, it was in Tanzania. And then it was in Kenya. Then it moved to Nigeria. The same guy from, I think it's from, the Middle East, Lebanon or so. What they call the Ponzi scheme? It was uh, M&M. 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 You know, and my wife will tell you there were Nigerians calling us to send them money to put in M&M. There were churches investing church money in M&M. They'll, they'll tell you that. This was just, was it last year or this year? Last year, right? Oh, I'm... <laughs> The man was promising them maybe 100 times. Yeah. Within a month, I'll, I'll give you back your money 100 times. Just, And of course, you know, he'll give them a sense of some people will get a little money and then they'll think the thing collapsed and people's money that till today. We don't know. The man himself has disappeared. He's not from Nigeria. He's gone back to, I think he's from Middle East or somewhere. He deceived people in Kenya, deceived people in Tanzania, came to Nigeria, did the same thing, and he has gone with their money. And people are like, oh, he promised me a car, a house. False liberty. Why? You were swayed by empty words. The Bible makes it clear that you, talking to the Pharisees, you are whitewashed sepulchers. Inside you are dead men's bones. I'm praying to God that God will give you eyes that see, not just the, car, not just the cover, but the content in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because if you know what's inside, you may know what to do after that. Amen. When Samuel went to anoint the sons of Jesse, the Bible says that God told him, I do not look on the outside, I look at the heart. It was because he saw the heart that he saw David was the king of Israel. I'm praying to God tonight that God will give you eyes that see not just the cover, but the content of the people that you're dealing with in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, beware of false liberty. Beware of of deception. Beware of of empty words. words. In this same 2 Peter 2, the Lord told me, that we should beware of covetousness. Do you know that covetousness is a last day's spirit? It's a last day's spirit. It's a last day's spirit. I'm going to read that scripture, 2 uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. We have seen covetousness, but never like we have seen it in our last days. Amen? So it's a spirit, and if if you don't watch it, you may get involved, the, the rat race, oh, I, 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 I need to make this. No, no, no. It will steal the true liberty from you. Let me, let me tell you why, then I'll read the scripture. In the book of, in the chapter, I'm going to read in um, verse 14 of that 2 Timothy chapter 2. Don't forget, 2 Timothy chapter 2 is talking about false preachers, false prophets who promise people liberty. So, verse 14 is describing them further, okay? It says that, and they have a heart trained in covetous practices. I'm reading from the English Standard Version. This will have a heart trained in covetous practices. And they are accursed children 
and have forsaken the right way and gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Boa, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Catch this. Are you doing what you're doing because of money or because you love God? That's a big question. There are pastors who preach not because they want to minister and save souls, but because they want to get a bigger offering. They pick where they go based on covetousness. I didn't know this before, but apparently the word covetousness is, the, the word being covetous is equivalent to idolatry. If you read Ephesians 5 verse 5, and if you read Colossians chapter 3 verse 5, the Bible says it there that covetousness, which is an on, on that insatiable desire for wealth, you can't just stop grabbing and taking stuff. You, you see your neighbor's car, you want it. You see your neighbor's house, you want it. You see your neighbor's child's clothes, you want I mean, you just can't. I mean, your kids are well clothed. I mean, your car is okay, but you just you, you want to take and take. Nothing given. The Bible says covetousness is idolatry. And the people who are preaching false liberty, the Bible calls them in Ephesians 2 verse 14, they are trained in covetousness and they are following Balaam who loved the wages. The only reason why Balaam came to prophesy for Balak was because he promised him money. That's the question. Ask yourself today, how many people change jobs just because of money? They don't ask God, what's your will, Lord? How many people change careers just because of money? I can't be a teacher. What am I doing in school? I've got to make some money. Beware of covetousness. You, will, you, 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 <laughs> you may make that money, but like the children of Israel, they ate the, the garlic and the, 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 the meats. And it, the Bible says as they put it in their mouth that they died as they were eating it. Did somebody get my point? But this is where I was going. Second Timothy chapter 3, the Bible says, In the last days men shall be, verse 2, lovers of themselves, covetous, covetous, covetous. In the last days, perilous times shall come, but men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, covetous. It's a spirit of the last days, Pastor Crump. And you and I need to be on, as, as alert to it as possible. We cannot, we cannot afford to, to let it creep upon us. In the book of, I believe, Luke chapter 12, Talking about the last day's spirit. What's going to happen in the last days? Let me read Matthew chapter 24. There's two, there's two last days scriptures. Matthew 24 and then another chapter in the book of Luke 21. I think Luke chapter 21. But covetousness will be a, a, a sign of the last days. And you and I need to be careful that we, in the midst of working for, you know, you, 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 you're, you live to give. You don't, so you, 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 your life is giving. So you're a pipe. You're not just acquiring stuff. Am I talking to somebody? Your life is a pipeline. You're getting to give people. You're not getting to just keep and hoard and just acquire stuff. Is somebody get what I'm talking about? So the end times are here. There's a false gospel being preached. We cannot afford to be deceived. In Matthew 24 verse 4, Jesus said, Take heed that no man deceive you. Take heed that no man deceive you. Take heed that no man deceive you. If you look at Psalm, I'm going to read a few scriptures, then we'll round up and pray some prayers. In the book of Psalms, 119 verse 45. 119 verse 45. How can I walk in true liberty? Psalm 119 verse 45. Look at what it says. It says, and I will walk at liberty. This is the psalm is saying. He says, I will walk at liberty for I seek thy precept. Someone say, I will walk at liberty. For I seek thy precepts. 
If you want to walk in true liberty, you have to be a student of the word. You have to be a, a, a disciple of the word. You have to be somebody who hungers and thirsts after righteousness. The, the psalmist said, I walk at liberty for I seek thy precept. I don't care what the world thinks. I don't care what the naysayers and and the commentators are saying, I know what God's word is saying. I'm going to stick to God's word. The whole world might say it's okay for Adam and Steve, but I know what the Bible says. Am I talking to somebody? The whole world may say it's okay to kill a baby in the womb at whatever age, but I know what the Bible says. The whole world may say it's okay to live together before you get married, but I know what the Bible says. And the Bible says, I will walk in liberty because I seek thy precepts. Galatians chapter 5. There's nothing that sets you free faster than the word of God. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. In Galatians chapter 5, talking about liberty. Verse 13. Look at what the Bible says. Verse 13 says, brethren, you have been called on to liberty. Somebody say, I have been called on to liberty. That means liberty is, ex is, is, is open access. It's equal opportunity. No pastor, bishop has more access to it than you. He says, brethren, you have been called to freedom, liberty. No chains on you. Listen to this. He says, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love. Someone say, by love. By love. Serve one another. How can I get rid of covetousness? By love. Serving one another. If I really want to get rid of covetousness, I'm going to be thinking of how can I be a blessing to Dr. Ngudi King. I'm not trying to get, I'm trying to give. I'm, 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 I'm trying to say how can I be a blessing to my wife, Rita. How can I be a blessing to Pastor Crump? I'm looking to serve, not to be served. Did somebody get what I'm talking about? The spirit of covetousness is the spirit of I want it, I want to be served. It's not a spirit of service where I'm giving. Not, it's a spirit of getting, not a spirit of giving. But the Bible says here that I want you to know that you've been called to liberty, but be careful your liberty can become carnal if you don't love and serve one another in the spirit of love. So listen to me. In this last is where there's a false liberty. I want you to walk in the, in the spirit of love and service, not covetousness. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? Just when I say beware, I mean it's out there. Don't catch the wrong spirit. Go to work every day, not trying to make an extra buck, but by serving somebody. Do you know that when you go to work, like Ivan and I go to work in the clinic, obviously we get paid, but, and, and, and Jai does the same thing in the hospital. When you serve in love, there's a better remuneration than anything money can give you. Am I talking to somebody? There's a higher worth to your service because you're, you're contributing to somebody's life, somebody's future. You're making a difference. If you're doing it just because of the money, I even know there are people, if it's just because of the money, you may quit that job because are, the insult is not worth the money. Amen. Praise the Lord. But by love, serve one another. The last scripture I'm going to read is James chapter 1. Somebody say, beware of false liberty. Let's look at what true liberty is because actually the Bible uses the word perfect law of liberty. So when we think of false liberty, there's false liberty, then there's the perfect, that's the true liberty. In James chapter 1 verse 25, the Bible talks about this. I'm going to read from verse 22. It says that, But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word but not a doer, he's like a man beholding his face in a mirror, in a glass. For he beholdeth his face and goes away and straight away forgets what manner of man he was. But if you look into the perfect law of liberty, someone said the perfect law of liberty. That's where God wants us to go to. There's a perfect law of liberty. There's a True liberty. There's a liberty that gives you perfection in life. Am I talking to somebody? 
if you look into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein, not being a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. The secret to perfection, the secret to being blessed in the last days, the liberty that I'm trying to push to everyone hearing me under the sound of my voice today is the perfect law of liberty, which means you are a hearer and a doer of the word of God. You cannot ignore the Bible and walk in true liberty. This Bible is the pathway to true liberty. Somebody get what I'm talking about. In the book of Luke chapter 12, Jesus, Luke chapter 11 verse 26, Jesus talked about the man who, he, they cast out the demon. And the Bible says the demon went out into the dry place. And the Bible says after some time, the demon came back and saw that the whole house was clean. Somebody say clean. clean. And the Bible says it was swept, it was garnished, but it was empty. And the Bible says that demon came back seven times worse and that he was worse than when he started. That's what happens to people who pursue false liberty. False liberty looks good, it looks clean, it looks well swept, but you don't get anything feeling the inside. You are empty, you are deceived, you are following the canal instead of the spiritual. You have no substance, you are just a shadow. And God said, whenever, the devil can see the inside, he can see the spirit. Don't forget, the seven sons of Sceva came and said, I cast you out in the name of Jesus, who Paul preaches. And the devil who saw them said, I don't know you. You are an empty, you, I, Paul I know, Jesus I know, but... There's nothing inside you that scares me. You are like a shadow. You are like an a, 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 a empty can. You, know? you make a lot of noise, but you have no content. Yeah. Pastor John Hagee, was, he came to New Orleans to minister. And this is a story he said. He said he was in a, in a restaurant in New Orleans. And as he passed a woman... The woman started growling and, and speaking in a very growling tone. I said, John Hagee, why are you in New Orleans? And John Hagee was with Jesse Duplantis, and he got excited. He said, the devil knows I'm in town. <laughs> Praise God. The devil knows I'm in town. Some people will be scared. Oh, my God, John, how did they know I'm here? He said, the devil knows I'm in town. That's how God wants each of us to be. You carry something that everywhere you go, the devil knows you are in town. You are too loaded to be displaced. Am I talking to somebody? You are carrying the spirit of God. You are, in fact, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians that you are immovable, unshakable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. You can't carry the glory and the power and the spirit of God and then you are empty. No. The secret to a life that cannot be deceived, that is not covetous, that is not empty, that is not walking in false liberty, is that you are living by the word of God. You are full of the word of God, and the spirit of God is quickening that word in your life. Is somebody getting what I'm talking about? If the Holy Ghost, the Bible says that Jesus spoke this to those who were believers. That means they knew, they believed in Jesus, but he said, there's something missing. He said that, I need to know the truth. I need you to come to a spirit of revelation. I want you to come from just letter that kill it to the spirit that give it life. Because if you can move ahead, he says that what you are experiencing now is not freedom. You are in church. You are, you are experiencing religious, uh, uh, f uh, religious ceremonies. He says that if you will know the truth, then you shall be free. And you shall be free indeed. My sister... Um, Amaka, she's a, my younger sister. She she was in, a, in my house for a few months, a few years ago, and she she had an encounter with God that totally transformed her life. Okay, she had breast cancer, and she's God has kept her and delivered her. But she she kept sharing the story of how at night when she was in my house, my wife knows the story. I think she said somebody would come and bathe her at night, something like that. Somebody, I mean, a strange old woman will come and bathe her. And I said, and you know, she was going through all these child health challenges. And I said, that dream stops. She said that since this breast cancer came, that dream has been coming to her. 
I said that in this house, we, don't, we, we walk in true liberty, perfect love liberty. You don't go to bed and experience nightmares. You don't go to bed and experience traumatic stress disorder. You don't go to bed and experience uh, anxiety and, and, and you wake up with, 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 with fear, amen? And we prayed for her, and from that day on, she didn't have that dream anymore, amen? Her life has gone from zero to hero. She's, she's on fire for God, and I'm so proud of her. But this is what I'm saying here. Liberty is real. Liberty is not, it's not lip knowledge. It's not, it's not, it's not just I, I'm, 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 I'm free. No, when you are free, you are free indeed. We see the evidence. Is somebody get what I'm talking about? You go from zero to hero. You go from nothing to something. You go from bondage to free. You go from your, your, your empty to being full. There must be a deposit in your life for you to say you are free. Somebody get what I'm talking about? There must be something. The devil knows if you are an empty can. He knows if there's nothing inside. But if you're carrying something, he knows I can't go there anymore. Amen. I want to stand up on our feet. We're going to take some time to pray because I believe that one of the secrets of true liberty is, is knowing the truth and walking in the Spirit of God. You can stand up on your feet. There's a story I'm going to share as we pray. In Nigeria, in the, in the year 2003, I believe, the attorney general of the country, those of us from Nigeria know this story, the attorney general, the chief law officer of the country, was killed in his own house by murderers. Until today, we don't know who killed him. And the Lord was telling me about it. He said that that's an example of false liberty. The man who said, I will prosecute the murderers, he couldn't protect himself from the murderers. That's false liberty. He had all the arsenal and armamentarium. Amazingly, what happened was he told his guards to, he, to go and eat, and the minute his guards went to eat, that was when they killed him. God told me to tell somebody something. Every human effort towards liberty will fail. Every human effort. The Bible says the arm of the flesh shall not prevail. Every human effort, the only thing that will deliver you totally is spiritual. It's from the kingdom. It's from above. That's why Jesus said, that which is from above is above all. Amen? Amen? I want you to ask the Lord, deliver me totally from every oppression of bondage. I choose to walk in total deliverance. Total deliverance in my spirit. Total deliverance in my soul. Total deliverance in my body. My mind is not a cage for satanic manipulation. I decree total deliverance in my spirit. Total deliverance in my soul. Total deliverance in my body. In the name of Jesus. I decree total deliverance. Total deliverance in my finances, total deliverance in my family, total deliverance in my health, every satanic conspiracy to put me in bondage. I decree total deliverance now upon my life in the name of Jesus. Vekora makato reboka ba, raba baba bosa pasheke dereboka, rio babosa paria babosa. You're gonna pray this prayer. You're gonna say, "I open the portals of liberty over my life. I open the portals of divine liberty." You see, heaven is full. The Bible says that wherever the Spirit of God is, there's liberty. Those portals are open tonight. He wants to pour it out upon you. Ask the Lord, I open the portals of divine liberty upon my life right now in the name of Jesus. I open the portals of divine liberty over my life tonight. I open the portals of divine liberty. You said in your word that he who the Son of Man sets free is free indeed. I open the portals. I open the portals. 
of divine liberty over my life. In the name of Jesus, I choose to be free. Freedom from death, freedom from sin, freedom from bondage, freedom from poverty, freedom from sickness. I choose divine liberty in the name of Jesus. Makabosh kere bakabosa, ria bababosa para bakazeko, baro bobosa payeko, ria bababoka yamayosi. We give you praise, Lord. We give you glory. In the name of Jesus. One of the secrets of deliverance, one of the secrets of liberty is, is freedom. The Bible says that a borrower is slave to the lender. Amen? Amen. Have you noticed that there are many things you want to do you cannot do because you are in debt? God wants you free from debt. That's why Jesus said to his disciples, Go open the mouth of the fish, Peter, and pay what we owe. Jesus didn't owe anybody. He said, I don't have money right now, but I'm going to give you something to help you pay what we owe. And God told me to tell somebody here, we have the ability to walk in freedom, liberty, financially. Amen? Amen. If God gives you the money you need, you can be free from debt. Mm -hmm. That's D-E-B-T. You can be free from debt. The Bible makes it clear. That, uh, uh, that, that, that he who was rich became poor, that we, that we might become rich because of him. What God is saying is that because a slave is a, 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 because a borrower is a slave to the lender, I want to break the chains of bondage over your life by breaking the spirit of de indebtedness in your life. Am I talking to somebody? Yes. America, we are so used to being in debt. Oh, the car, oh, the house. All oh, the chair you sit on, all oh, the clothes, you, everything is, you know, where we come from in Nigeria, money is, people pay for everything. They don't, they don't take mortgage. They pay for the house, they buy the car, they don't. Nobody's, but I, when you come to America, after 20, my, we've been here for maybe 17 years. Well, it's, it's now the, the lifestyle, you know, but it's not the divine lifestyle. Am I talking to somebody? It's not the kingdom lifestyle. We're going to take authority against the spirit of bondage, against financial provision. Amen? Yes. If you don't know God can supply, you will keep borrowing. Yes. If you don't know you have limitless supplies, you will keep looking to human institutions. That's the truth. But if you know you have a source whose source is limitless, whose provision is limitless, you won't go begging or borrowing because all you have to do is wait on him. The man called Muller was a preacher in Bristol, United Kingdom in England. And he, 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 he opened his church and his ministry to almost 3,000 orphans. When those orphans turn 16, he'll give them a Bible and he'll give them a penny. And he says, go, he'll teach them a trade. They'll stay with him for like a year or two. And he'll train them in some craft They'll go to school with him, maybe three years or so. And there was a day one of them was sharing the story after he, I think he had passed, that they were in the, in the building because he had dormitories for these students and they had no food. But Pastor Muller said, let us pray. And as he began to pray that morning, he finished praying, thank God for the food in front of the kids, but there was no food. As soon as I finished praying, a man knocked on the door and said, God woke me up yesterday and told me to bake bread for all the kids in the orphanage. That was 7 a.m. As soon as he left, a man came and said, my milk wagon broke down right in front of the, of the, of the, of the school, of the orphanage. And instead of leaving it there to, 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 to spoil because they didn't have pasteurization then, I want to give it all to the, to the orphanage. And that was how he lived his life by faith, divine provision. He never wrote a letter asking people to support him. He never begged anybody for money. He just prayed, thank God, and God supplied all his needs. Amen? And I believe the spirit of covetousness is a spirit that makes you, is, is a, it, it's a spirit that does not believe God can supply. Because if you really believe God can supply, why would you want somebody else's stuff? Am I talking to somebody? So you're going to ask the Lord tonight, Lord, I ask for enlarge my capacity for divine provision. 
I believe that's what we're going to pray tonight. Because many of us have an understanding, oh, God can give me this, but maybe he can't give me that. Maybe he can help pay off my car, but he can't pay off my house. Maybe he can help me pay off my, you know, my clothes, but not my, my, my student loans. And we put God in a compartment. We're going to say, Lord, enlarge my capacity for financial provision. I take authority against the spirit of bondage to debt, D-E-B-T. I break the chains of debt over my life. I pursue, oh God, freedom from debt. I pursue liberty from bondage, from, from, from being indebted to people. The Bible says that the borrower is a slave to the lender. I choose to be free from debt. I choose to be free from financial bondage. I choose to walk in liberty financially. Lord, enlarge my capacity, oh God for financial provision. I will not look to man. I will not look to human beings. I will not look to my job. I will not look to the government. I will not look to my husband or my wife or my, 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 my family, oh God. I look to you, oh God, as the source of my financial provision. Send now prosperity, oh God. Send now increase, oh God. In the name of Jesus. You're going to ask the Lord one more prayer before we take some time to take our offering. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're going to pray a prayer. We're going to ask the Lord, let the perfect law of liberty, yes. let the perfect law of liberty appear by fire in my life. The Bible says if you are a hearer and a doer of the word, the Bible says you look into the perfect law of liberty. It says that you will be blessed in your deed. You're going to say, Lord, let the perfect law of liberty appear by fire in my life. That means you'll be a testimony. If people want to know what true freedom looks like, they will look at you. If people want to know what true liberty looks like, they will look at you. You're going to say, Lord, let the perfect law of liberty appear in my life by fire. I will be a hearer and a doer. I will be a continuer. I will continue in your word. Therefore, let the perfect law of liberty appear by fire in my life. Talk to God right now. Let the perfect law of liberty appear by fire in my life. Let the perfect law of liberty appear by fire in my life. Let the perfect law of liberty appear by fire in my life. Let the perfect law of liberty appear by fire in my life. Let the perfect law of liberty appear by fire in my life. I will go, I will, I will get stronger, oh God, not weaker. I will get healthier, oh God, not weaker. Your word says that the path of the just is like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter. I will get wealthier, not poorer, oh God. Because your word says that you supply all my needs according to your riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Let the perfect law of liberty, Father God, appear in my life by fire. My wife shall be a cornerstone. My children shall be, oh God, like fruitful vines in my home, oh God. Hey, Baba, my life shall be a testimony of the goodness and the greatness of God. I will not be a victim. I will be a victor. I will not be below. I will be above. I will not be the tail. I will be the head. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let the perfect law of liberty appear in my life by fire even now in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We give you praise, Lord. There are three people here. God said, you are in bondage to fear. And God said, you do not have to walk in any bondage to fear another day of your life. I'm going to read Hebrews 2.14. The Bible says, For as much then, Hebrews 2.14, as the children are partakers of flesh and blood. The Bible says, Jesus also himself took part of the same, that through his death, somebody say through his death, 
he might destroy him that has the power of death. That is the devil. Verse 15. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime. Somebody say lifetime. lifetime. Subject to bondage. Catch this. The Bible says that the reason why Jesus came was to deliver those who have been in bondage to the fear of death. And that fear of death has plagued their lifetime to bondage. They want to do anything, they can't do it. They want to go on mission trip, they're afraid to fly. They want to go on, 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 on evangelism, they're afraid the, the car will crush them. I mean, their life has been limited. They want to marry, but they're afraid the man is a witch or a wizard. I'm, I'm just saying, there are people whose life is plagued by the fear and God said, in this room, there are three people who have that spirit. And he said that, I want you to understand that the reason why Jesus came was to deliver those who all their life had been in bondage to, to the fear of death. That's the reason why Jesus came, to set those people free, to give them liberty. Is somebody getting what I'm talking about? That blood still flows from Emmanuel's veins. You don't have to live here in the fear of death. Is somebody getting what I'm talking about? You may put up a show, you may, may say the right words, but God says to tell you, your heart is speaking to God. You have a fear of death. And tonight, that spirit must leave you. The Bible says you have come to Mount Zion. You have come to, you have come to Mount Zion where there's deliverance. Somebody say deliverance. Deliverance. Where there's holiness and the possessing of possession. You can't come here and not be delivered. Amen. You can't come here and not be delivered. It's too late for you. You've, you've shown up on Mount Zion. There must be deliverance. You are that person. Just talk to God. I bind every sphere of death. I bind every spirit of the fear of death that has kept me in bondage in my life. I release the blood of Jesus upon my life. Talk to God right now. Talk to God right now. I release the blood of Jesus. I bind and I cast into the abyss of hell. The fear of death. Any man, any woman under the sound of my voice, Lord, I send the word to them right now. I loose you from bondage to the fear of death. I loose you from bondage to the fear of death. I loose you from bondage to the fear of death. Now, in the name of Jesus. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. Now in the name of Jesus. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. Now in the name of Jesus. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. Now in the name of Jesus. I command you free in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit. Let us just worship the Lord. The Holy Spirit is doing a work in this place. Thank you, Father God. Be magnified, O Lord. You are highly exalted. And there is nothing you can do. Oh Lord, my eyes are on you. Be magnified. Oh Lord, be magnified. Hallelujah, Lord, be magnified, O Lord, O God, you are highly exalted, you're highly exalted, O God, and there is nothing you can do 
Oh, there is nothing, oh Lord. My eyes are on you. Be magnified. Oh, 